All right, Ralph. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm really happy to be here to be able to talk about what I'm passionate about. And as you see, I would have had a colleague with me, Ingo Tone. And first and foremost, I would like to excuse him. He is our principal key expert for industrial AI, but he gave everything on the booth in all the discussions with you and lost his voice in the process. So you cannot speak anymore, but I will try to make up and you are now left with me. So, my name is Ralf Gross, I'm Innovation Manager for Industrial AI, and I would like to start with a seemingly simple question. So, to all of you, what is artificial intelligence? So, I brought a quote with me. Artificial intelligence is about creating machines that perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people. So, Considering that this quote is older than me, actually, might not be the big news, right? And now that we have seen the quote, every one of you knows exactly what artificial intelligence is, I guess. So it's kind of self-explanatory, isn't it? Okay, well, let's have a second look. Um, so what does the quote actually state? So we are talking about machines that perform functions performed by people. So in essence, we are talking about intelligent automation. So artificial intelligence is nothing else but intelligent automation. And creating these machines can obviously not be achieved by one single magic technology. So we have to look a little bit more into the details here. And let's say today we are looking at one subsection of artificial intelligence. We are talking about machine learning and machine learning can create such machines. So in machine learning, the automation logic, the logic you would like to apply in your production machine, for example, is generated and not explicitly programmed, but it's generated by looking at data. And to get a first grasp at it, um, let's look at one example. Imagine you would like to automate the unloading of pallets within your production line, within your intro logistics. How would you do it? Everyone came up with a solution, I guess. Probably not, so it's a hard problem, in fact. But you would have several options. So we would have the option of using standard computer vision pipelines, building specific architectures, some pattern recognition systems for matching with what you would like to see. And in the end, you would, like, would have probably a lot of work to build everything up to get this running. And you need to explicitly program for every situation you would like to use the system in. So let me tell you the alternative. How would it be if you just collect some data, label the data, throw it into a machine learning algorithm, and implicitly get the system that performs this function for you? So, seems to be convenient. Well, in fact, it is convenient. However, this convenience comes at a price tag. And this is what we will we'll have our deeper look now into. So what is the price we pay when we select the convenience in this case? There are several different problems we will face, and we face a lot, and mostly in industrial environments. And those are only a few of them we list here. So imbalanced data, of course, is a problem. Missing situational awareness, so the AI knowledge, machine learning does not know everything, obviously. Um, but the most severe thing is, you do not explicitly program the behavior anymore. It's only implicitly learned and thereby you introduce implicit risks and you might not even be aware of these risks. So let me point out this example of imbalanced data. So you can put up, you can build up this machine learning system. It works well, it works fine, a while, a time, maybe one month, maybe two months. And at some point in time, you can see an error. You cannot explain yourself. And this error might have a big impact on your production line. And that might be due to imbalanced data. So we need to look at all, of, at all of these challenges, and we need to find a solution for all of these challenges. And we can do this, and we can support you there with our big ecosystem, with the experts we have. But even if you solve all of these isolated problems, that unfortunately doesn't seal the deal, because we need to keep in mind the whole life cycle. We need to talk about the whole planning and integration part, the continuous operation of the system. 
that comes with some additional challenges we will have a look at now. So what we need to do actually is to diligently plan, work together, and successfully integrate and operate it. And to get this right is not simple. So let's have a, have a look at a simple example of what could go wrong if you don't do it. So here we have one example of an AI-based system. And it's not so much about the use case, so let's say it's about quality inspection in this case, so good, bad um, decision. And this is a prototype project we did with one of our factories. Um, we wanted to learn about the challenges we will face when we bring AI into industrial environments. And in fact, what we developed here was in a hackathon a while ago already. The system did work quite well. The system did work quite well with the data we faced. And we had a quite good accuracy, quite good machine learning metrics, so it really worked out. Um, but after some time, as described beforehand, the performance of the AI model dropped significantly. And what was the reason in this case? So interestingly, as you can already see on the picture here, there was kind of a gradually decrease of the illumination strength. And I can tell you, this decrease of illumination strength was not visible by human eyes. So it was really like the light source diminished a little bit over time, and at some point in time, it reached a tipping point, and the AI model didn't perform anymore as it did before, just because the input data changed over time. And this is a, why we not need to talk about continuous operation. So where does this problem, in fact, come from? So we trained our AI model on some limited data, and this data more or less represented the specification, so it determined the applicability of the AI model. So we had a limited applicability of the AI model, and we didn't, in fact, could predict that this applicability and this data will drift out of this domain we could use it in. So how can we deal with such issues, and can we deal with such issues with proper planning? So, to be honest, it's tough to plan for everything. It's tough to predict every situation that could happen. But we can put a little bit more structure in it. We can use helpful planning tools like operational design domains, so explicitly stating the domain in which the model should work, and really train and test for this domain. We could use goal structured notation for continuous monitoring. Are we still in the domain for continuous monitoring of the performance? And we should use the tools. And actually, what we need to plan for in this case is traceability. So we would like to get a robust and reliable system. And for this, it's crucial to work diligently and to have these mitigation measures in place. So the mitigation measures you define while analyzing your operational design domain, the environment your system should work in. And if we take a look at this one, what could we do in, in this example? So it could be a simple solution like mm, training, testing the model, and during testing, identifying the boundaries of the applicability of the model, set these boundaries for some monitoring service within some monitoring tool, and then once the boundaries are kind of broken, rise an alarm. And actually, you can do this, and we can support you there with our operation service for industrial AI where the colleagues help you in identifying the boundaries and then raising the alarm in case this happens. Is this everything now? So are we done if we do this? Are we done if we have the operational design domain, if we have the goal structure rotation, the continuous monitoring? So we still need to talk about integration, how to get the system into your shop floor and how to get it running into a shop floor. And if you talk about integration, then we talk about IT and OT for artificial intelligence in industrial environments. Let's first take a look at the IT perspective. So from, from IT perspective, the, lies, the, the light source is an asset to monitor. So we have some asset in the production line. We would like to monitor the performance, the behavior of the asset. And we can use this with, with, AI, with IT tools. So we can connect it to, a, to some cloud environment tracking how the light source behaves over time. And if something changes within the light source, then we can generate a log entry, we can raise an alarm and send a message to someone to fix it. So that would be the IT perspective, really generating this log message, track and trace, sending someone to fix it at some point in time. And that's fair enough, right? Because for, from an IT perspective, that's totally OK. You get the system up and running. 
you have the error locked somewhere, and you can come back to it. However, from an OT perspective, that's not some sufficient. And then if we talk about proper OT integration, this can start with seemingly simple measures. So if we have this occurring change, and we have a potential malfunction of this uh, um, industrial AI system, then this needs to be communicated via OT communication, so via operation technology communication channels to your PLC, to the automation system you operate your AI system in. And if something is wrong, we would also like to have an alarm in the OT environment, right? This could go up to, in this case, you get the state of the AI system live, online, in your automation environment, and it's running. However, if something gets wrong, you probably would like to have an error message, some log message in your OT system, and it could go up to a red light at your PLC because your system is not working anymore as it should work. So what do we, from this very short presentation, what do we take with us today? So the first thing is, let's shape the future of automation together. I told you AI is kind of a set of tools for intelligent automation. So we are talking about the future of the automation and we really should do this together because it's a tough task. We all need to work together to solve all the issues we have there. And the second thing is at custom, as custom in automation, so we are already used to it in automation and we do it usually, we need to work closely together and we need to look at the details. And we really need to work diligently and to consider what could happen with the system. And we shouldn't just hope for the best because now we have an AI in our environment and AI works. So that's not how it, how it works in the end. And for a successful deployment operation, and that's the last part, you need to consider and understand the OT and the IT world, as I showed with the simple example of integrating this error message not only into the log system of your IT world, but also via the OT communication channels into your automation system and into your PLC world so that you can deal with the error and really keep your system and your production up and running. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening. I would love to talk to you in more detail. You can find us on the booth from my perspective, from your perspective, right-hand side. And I would really love to discuss the details with you. And we would love to say a big thank you to you that you took over this presentation here, yeah. Ralph. Um, thank you very much. You got a bit time left. Stay here. We're going to say, Ingo, we are really sorry <laughs> that you could not do it here. Um, there he is. He's just talking with his hands now at the fair booth. Okay, thank you.